Let's move over and talk to Scott Eggers, a fellow co a Strappy community star and awesome human being. By the way, Scott, I'm loving your background. Hopefully we'll be learning a bit more from you about how to extend Strappy um, using hooks, controllers and services. Over to you, Scott. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. So once again, my name is Scott Agers. I am the creator of IJS.co, which I've actually just launched uh, this April. So I'm very stoked and excited about that. But the important uh, part about IJS.co is that the backend is, of course, created with Strapi. But to the talk itself, in this one, we will take a look at how to customize your Strapi application with uh, concepts that are possibly the most important ones when it comes to customizing your Strapi application. And we will have Donald Duck joining us on this trip and hopefully that will make it just a tad more fun. But we do have a lot of ground to cover, so strap yourself in because I will be breezing through these concepts quite quickly, but I will at the end of presentation add a link to a page where you will be able to find more information on all of the topics that we cover here. So let's take a look at the agenda. So what's gonna happen is we will send uh, Mr. Donald Duck to Scranton, Pennsylvania to get us a bag of crisps and all that during COVID. And the tasks that we will need to uh, complete is uh, pass in data from our Next.js app via GraphQL Apollo mutation. Uh, then once it reaches Strapi application, we will in lifecycle methods validate the data. In controllers then we will uh, connect the logged in user to the trip and finally we will use the service uh, custom strappy service to log uh, the trip itself what we will not cover is authentication or any of the setup details but again you can find more details about that in the link we also may not get the crisps actually but so first on the list is the lifecycle methods concept and i like to think of this as the border control post where um, if we think about the database as the country and data as the traveler who tries to enter that country then border control post makes a lot of sense because lifecycle methods is where we can validate this data and uh, decide whether we want to let the traveler into the country or database or not. Um, it is also the perfect example or the perfect use case for lifecycle methods is to slugify post titles. So for example, if you are creating a post on the front end and passing in a title and a body and maybe some other information, then you can either manually or by using a package like Slugify or something like that, uh, create or generate the slug and add it to the post data before it's saved to the database. So that's what lifecycle methods are good for. Um, it is not good for accessing user state because we just don't have that state available in lifecycle methods. And it's also not good for creating reusable functions because what happens in lifecycle methods stays in lifecycle methods, at least in terms of code. Whatever you define there will not be accessible uh, from outside that method. Next in line, we have controllers uh, and those are kind of like headquarters because most of the business logic typically will happen in a controller itself. We also have the logged in user available from controllers. So if we need to access the authenticated user details, we can do it from the controller as well. Still not good for creating reusable functions, which leads us to the services, which is the storage for your reusable functions. Um, it helps you to stay dry, so don't repeat yourself, create reusable functions and access them from anywhere in the app, even if it's in a completely uh, different um, model. It is not good for accessing any data that you don't explicitly pass in through the action um, or that you don't hook, um, request with this trappy query. All right, with that out of the way, let's jump into the demo and We'll send, first thing we'll do, we'll send Donald on a reckless trip. Once we, uh, once we hit the create button, it created the trip, but hey, it didn't check for a COVID test. Uh, we don't know who the traveler is. Uh, it just created without thinking and that's no good. So let's check um, for the COVID test as our first uh, 
line of business. So I have a, um, a lifecycle method snippet already here. I just uncommented it. Uh, we're restarting the server now. What's happening here is we are just console logging the data that we are receiving from the form and we will check for is traveler COVID free uh, boolean to be <clears throat> true. And if it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, then we will just throw a message saying that he's a threat. So let's try it out. Just getting some crisps. If we don't check this uh, checkbox, it should fail and it does just that. Mister, you are a threat to the public. Easy fix, no vaccine needed, just checkbox. And we have created our uh, first uh, trip with the COVID test check. But still, we don't know who the traveler is. So let's fix that with our controllers um, create method. So what we will do here, we are overriding the default strappy create method with our own. And because we are doing that, uh, we will also need to manually create the trip. So what I usually do is I put the strappy query of a model into its own variable that I uh, add API at the end, just so that it's more easier for me to read and use it. I don't have to repeat this part all the time. And uh, what we're doing here is in the create method, we are spreading the uh, request body, which is essentially the same data that we uh, saw previously here, which is this uh, contains destination, the COVID check and title. And then we are uh, accessing our logged in user from the context state. And we are putting it into current user variable. And then we are adding the variable of the, um, sorry, the value of the current user ID to the traveler relational field. And then we will just uh, console log the created trip and return it as a response. So let's try to do that. We already got some crisp, so let's get some soda. Uh oh. Okay, so we got the soda and we have the traveler information added to the trip. Donald is uh, obviously getting upset, but here in the console log, we can see that all of the information about the logged in user has been added to uh, the trip. And the last thing that we will take a look at is a strappy services. And in order to define a new service, we need to go to the services uh, folder. And depending on what your collection type is called, uh, you will have a file.js here where you uh, most likely, well, at the beginning, you will just see an empty object like this. But in order to uh, define a new custom custom service, you just add a key with a value of uh, the function. And the name is, of course, um, trivial. You can put whatever you want there. So we will uh, simply log the, <clears throat> the trip details uh, to the console with it. Uh, let's give this a save as well. We have soda crisps. Let's... Let's get some chewing gum. COVID test was provided. And now we can see that uh, by adding this strappy that services that trip that log trip, which is the name of our custom service here. Um, and by providing this uh, service with the uh, created trip uh, details, we can uh, access that trip uh, information within that service. And in this case, we are just uh, logging out um, a notification. Mr. Donald Dog just took a trip to Scranton. So that is it. What did just happen? Uh, we took a look, a really quick look at three concepts that will help you customize your Strapi app. And those were lifecycle methods that will be triggered each time before or after uh, the uh, data is touched in the database. We took a look at the controllers where you will be handling most of your business logic and where you can access the authenticated user. And we took a look at services that are your uh, storage for reusable functions. And with that, we are out of time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of the conference. I hope you found this useful and fun. And above all, of course, I do hope that you learned a thing or two about Strapi. If you want to find out more about any of the topics, head on over to ijs.co forward slash Strapi. You can find me on social media as Scott Augers and uh, say hi, ask questions. Happy to answer. With that, I'm over and out. Bye. Thank you, Scott, for that energetic powerful and detailed talk. When moving away from a blog-based website or a simple point-and-click website and building something more dynamic and interactive, working with hooks, controllers and services can really supercharge your development process and allow you to create some really dynamic and creative experiences and solutions. So really great to have some more insights on that side of things.
Thank you, Scott.